What? Yeah, 19. Hey everybody, and welcome back to Marketing Insights. I'm Yasha Harari. COVID. Yeah, I know. We're at a point now where it's patently ridiculous with what's happening. And all of it is basically what I said months ago would happen if you watched that video. It was all pretty obvious, I think, to anyone monitoring that this would be happening. And what's frankly, I mean, it would be funny if it wasn't so damn deadly to some, is the insane politicization of science and facts. And part of the reason that that's happening, quite simply, is because the facts have been muddied by the very sources of the data, the data authorities, who themselves have, on various occasions, made unclear the facts. For example, and this is just highly underreported, but it's still a fact, California recently increased the number of ways that they could list somebody as having COVID by 19 times. In other words, there are now 20 times as many ways you could be listed in total as there were at the beginning as having COVID, meaning they're increasing the number of positive confirmed cases, even if they're not actually tested, just because they show symptoms on a list that is now 19 times or 20 times bigger than the original list. But what happens when you're confirming 20 times more people as having something that you haven't actually tested them for? You're going to get higher numbers of con confirmations that are not actually confirmations. And what happens when you see higher numbers of death going up every day in people who you say have COVID, but you haven't confirmed it? Then you have to compare the total number of people who are dying from COVID on the books with the total number of people who are dying from every other disease related to the death of the people who are dying supposedly of COVID, i.e comorbidities, right? And the reason you have to do that is to make sure that you're not miscalculating the death spike of COVID having anything to do with the decrease in deaths in other causes of death that normally happen. And the reason you have to do that is because the Center for Disease Control themselves publish very clearly on their own website, as I've shown on this channel before, and as you can see there again, that more than 90% of people who have been listed as COVID uh, patients had comorbidities, and more than 90% of fatalities of COVID involved people who had comorbidities. More than 90% of people who have been listed as COVID uh, patients had comorbidities. And more than 90% of fatalities of COVID involve people who had comorbidities. Therefore, you cannot take comorbidity lightly. You cannot discount it. You must measure it because it is overwhelmingly part of the equation of people who are dying from COVID and people who are not. Again, I'm not saying the virus isn't real. It's real. It kills people. But the number of people that are actually dying of it and the number of people who are actually dying of other causes while they happen to have it, and the number of people who are dying of other causes while they may not, or in fact don't have it, and they've been listed as having it even though it wasn't actually confirmed, these are all important data. 
Anyone who reports these numbers is having their channels muted. Anyone who speaks about this is having their voice suppressed. And again, I'm not questioning the validity of the fact that there is a virus called novel coronavirus COVID-19. I just think that by having muddied the numbers, it causes people to question the authority and to question the validity of the numbers and the global response to it. Because if 1,500 people a day died of COVID-19, yes, that's a high number, but if 1,500 people died with COVID-19 but actually died of something else, then that's an entirely different story. And because there's such huge amounts of information showing that the numbers are not clear and that they are highly distorted from what is being generally reported, it is incumbent upon us to actually show what is the truth about the numbers, what are the real facts. So that's why I'm doing this video. If you're going to market a pandemic or a virus or a response to it or a vaccine or any part of this thing, and many people do, presenting the facts is actually very important. Manipulating them may be important to some, but I believe presenting the facts is a better way to be marketing a response to something like a global pandemic. And regardless of what side of the fence you're on, if you're trying to present a response to this thing to have success and get the world back to normal, then it's incumbent upon you as a marketer to understand the real facts and not care about what's in the consumer retail headlines, because those will never be the real facts. And of course, the fact that I've just said that means this, <laughs> this video will also be muted at best. At worst, something else they'll do to it. But again, I'm not presenting any conspiracy theory or anything here. I don't believe any was ever necessary for this entire thing to be pulled off. It's in the interest of every politician to do exactly what they have done. They don't let an opportunity or a terrible event slip away. I just want to be clear in terms of the definition of people dying of COVID. So the case definition is, is very simplistic. It means at the time of death, um, it was a COVID positive diagnosis. So that means that if you were in hospice and had already been given you know, a few weeks to live, and then you also were found to have COVID, that would be counted as a COVID death. It means that if, um, it technically, if even if you died of a clear alternate cause, but you had COVID at the same time, it's still listed as a COVID death. So um, everyone who's listed as a COVID death doesn't mean that that was the cause of the death, but they had COVID at the time of death. I hope that's helpful. They just, that's, that's their bread and butter. So with that said, I think it's important to again remember the importance of how you market your pandemic or response to it. You might think, well, what do you mean market the pandemic? Well, obviously there are people marketing the pandemic or getting the story out that it is out there, that it is a scary thing, that it's doing all these terrible things. Be careful how you market it. Make sure you're presenting the information correctly because if you don't, Politicizing facts does not yield better fruit, right? You and I can disagree on things, opinions, ways we see the world, ideas, dreams, hopes, whatever, preferences, but we can't disagree on facts, okay? And that would be, and it is, highly detrimental to society. Forget marketing. So let's stick to the facts. That's what I'm doing. And that's why I'm showing you these numbers, which I hope make sense to you, which I hope you can appreciate. And uh, if you think I'm doing something worthwhile here, then please uh, share it with somebody else that you think might appreciate the information so that they can get the word out too. Because as a marketer, I think it's important to stick to the facts. I know people say, well, marketing is all about advertising and marketing and branding, and it's all about messaging, and it's how you manipulate the truth to tell a story. Yeah, well, I don't think that's a good way to do it. I like to stick to the facts. 
I like to be honest and genuine and authentic in my storytelling and messaging and branding and not be dishonest and unethical and distort the truth because I don't think that helps in the long term, especially not when it comes to an issue that has to do with health, general public health, society, and the economy. I don't think it helps to shut down an entire economy based on false data or distorted data or misrepresented data or underreported data, the data that actually matters. If we are to be a data-driven economy and a data-driven society, then we must uphold the integrity of that data. Otherwise, the underlying pinnings of the society, they, well, they're, they are questionable and certainly not authoritative. And that would be a massive problem for anything like a government. So on that cheery note, and I'm sure again this video will be deleted because of, or muted because of all the wonderful references to the thing you cannot say. Thing you cannot say. Thing you cannot say. <sighs> I bid you all a wonderful day. And until next time, take care. Thank <laughs> you.